morning, whatever it is, wherever you are right now, watching this, maybe. So my next project, I'm gonna do some work on this Vivo six inch vise that I've been using pretty much for the first time recently, doing a bit of milling. And it's quite useful to me, but I need to make some keys, some tramming keys for it. The ones that came with it are 18 millimeters wide and the T-slots on my Harrison mill are only half an inch wide. So I bought myself some 18 by 18 stock bar and I'm going to machine that to make a couple of keys. Actually, that side, going that way. Uh, but I might also do some other work with this vise. One thing I've found with it is the screw's not really quite long enough and when the vise is closed completely, the screw is about halfway through the nut. Plus also, I think it would be useful if this vise had a bearing at this end, at this end, rather than having the screw flapping about. Now I've no, uh, I've no concerns about the vise. The jaw doesn't lift when you clamp, but we're always looking for nice little projects to do, aren't we, in the home workshop. So maybe I'll do that. So it means the video might be a couple of parts. I don't know yet. We'll see. Hmm. You can see I'm not really dressed for this. It's Saturday morning, the sun's shining. I can't decide what to do, whether to watch a bit more YouTube, have another coffee, or come in here and get started, or have an early lunch. I've got a COVID jab this afternoon at two o'clock, so it kind of falls in the middle of the afternoon. Um, I'll decide, I'll decide. <laughs> So you can see when that vise is clamped shut, nothing in it, the screw finishes about halfway through the nut. And the other thing I should look at is this handle. So it's the pin, the pin's cockeyed. So I could tap that out and sort it out. It's, mm, yeah, it's in, certainly in this. I don't know about this part. So I could improve that. I want to make these hold down bolts fit into my mill table. Uh, they're a little bit too tall just here and they're a bit too wide. And also I want to make some clamping blocks that sit on there and that might involve machining this blue paint off here and getting it um, you know, to a good finish. So actually the work to be done is getting like quite a long list, isn't it? Oh, and also there's some flashing here which would be just better if I removed it, then the fluid would come round easier. And also, I might extend that channel there. It's flat here. And the coolant runs off this way and this way, but actually it might be quite useful uh, because coolant landing on here tends to drip off this edge. Oh, and there's a screw there that's come through. That's just to hold the key underneath, but it's come right through. And if the fluid drops on there, the coolant, it drips through that hole onto the knee. So maybe a bit of arrow doubt or something on that, but maybe a small channel across there just to allow the fluid to run round instead of dropping off. This is but a short piece that I'm cutting, so it's only held on by about 20 millimeters in there, but I've spaced it with the old tramming blocks there, which are both 18 millimeters, this and this. Hopefully that'll work. We'll cut this down 8 mil at the moment in half mil steps. Some coolant should arrive soon. Hopefully. Come on. There we are. I could probably cut more than half a mil, I may try. 
I don't want to repeat the slitting saw disasters that I've had recently. I've increased that to a one millimeter cut and it's doing it quite easily. Last cut now, eight millimeter depth. So let's hope this is okay because I widened the T by about six thou compared to the ones that I made for the dividing head, which were a little bit loose in the slot. That's fine. You don't want them so tight that you can't get them in. And for 99.9% .9 of jobs I'm doing on the vice, that'll line it up sufficiently. And on the odd occasion it needs to be, you know, within a tenth or something, then you can just wiggle that enough and get it lined up. So now I need to reduce this part, the top of the T, down to a three millimeters, three millimeters this way. And we'll do that on the shaper. Half a mil cut, 20 thou. There may be a wee bit of fitting to do on the vise, but that's all right, I think. So drill, drill, counterbore, counterbore, cut. I finally bought myself some counterbores from Amazon, about 15 pounds. There were five in the set. This one has a 6.2 millimeter pilot and a 10.4 millimeter pocket cutter. So I'm going to use a C letter drill to drill this for the pilot. Now the C is about 6.15 millimeters, but my experience is they tend to cut a little bit large. Now I've already drilled a pilot in there because with these 135 degree points, they can wander off, is, has been my experience. Yes, they do cut a bit large. This drill isn't really rigid enough, but I haven't got the vertical head on the mill. Right. That's down to the stop. It's better if you keep lots of pressure on it. Well, they worked out quite neat. So the last step is just to cut it in half. I'll do that with a hacksaw and just deburr any edges that need it. Well, blocks fitted and I put a pop mark on the same side of both of them so I can always get them the same way around as they were machined on the mill. There's a bit of this, but that shouldn't matter if I pull it this way or push it that way against the edges of the keys. Well, we have a problem, Houston. Keys are in the right way around, pushed the vise across, clamped it down, so the keys are hard up against the T-slot. When I clock it, you'll see the problem. So starting on about zero, and this is gonna give about a one millimeter out of tram. There you are. So what is the problem? In other words, where is the problem? And I'm sorry to say, I think the problem is in the tramming key slots 
on the underside of the vise. But just to be sure, because this back jaw should be parallel to this, because this jaw can come off, sorry, this block, this jaw can come off and go onto the other side of this block. And I'm, I have tried other measurements here, so I'm blethering on, but I know it's the vise isn't sitting trammed on the table. So let's investigate. First test, my two tramming keys, they're both the same way around. As I push this ground block against it, it may not be perfect because the tramming keys are sort of canting up slightly because there's a bit of space in this T-slot here. But even so, you'll see that it in off by a millimetre. Yeah, slightly off. I mean, the table may be very slightly out of tram, although I don't think so. I mean, coming back again there, what's happened? Has the gauge stuck? This gauge isn't 100%, to be honest. It is a little bit off, isn't it? But that might be simply because one of the keys might be riding up more slightly than the other. They do tend to jump up as I push this over. Let's try another test. So it's not in the keys themselves, is it? As a second test then, a couple of half inch spaces for the arbor there dropped in, nice and tight. Very little movement on those. And I'm gonna take the vise upside down and clamp on here, and that should align the vise with the table, and then we can look at the tramming key slots on the vise. Sitting all right now. That'll do. Right. If I, sup, if I put some, well, I'll put the keys back in and then put something against it that I can clock on. Well, keys, block. Now, don't worry about a little bit of wiggle. I just have to try and hold it flat against the base. Anyway watch. Now up until now I've been very positive about this vice but I'm afraid it's a bit hard to be positive when that's happening. Well there is another way and that is to make the keys to suit the vice. So you can see I could run those double cutters across these keys with it like this and then I could machine the keys to suit the vise and take out this discrepancy but it means starting again. Well here I've taken the blocks out but I've just put the cap heads in and if I put my test block against those cap heads we're on zero So 15 one hundredths and yet when I put the test blocks in, sorry what I mean is the tramming blocks in and put this against it, 0.8 millimetres is the least I can get. So <laughs> the screws are pretty much true, they're not true obviously completely but they're a lot better than the slots. So they haven't been done in one operation that's for sure. It's not good I'm afraid. Not good. Thinking overnight, I've decided to start with new keys. If I try and recut those others, they'll never be right. So just counter boring. Fairly slow progress, this. Never mind. So I've machined these down about to this surface here and then I've put a couple of washers underneath it to lift them up and then I go over it now when I take the washers out then this edge here should be below this surface. I didn't want to put the washers under it when I was machining way up here because I thought there could be too much 
leverage on it and maybe it would pull it out. I wasn't sure. I've got the second key packed up on washers and I'm taking it down below the surface of this. So when I take the washers out and screw it in, this sort of top T edge here will be below that surface and that one's already done. Just coming off the last cut, I hope. Coolant everywhere, blood everywhere. Just another day in the office, eh? Well, that's both keys machined so that the broad part of the T is just below the surface here. The next thing I'm going to do is take some height off them. Now, technically, I don't need to do that. There isn't any chance of this locking bolt here, T-bolt, catching them at all, I don't think. But even so, I think it'll look better if I just took them down to about here. They're both set up anyway, so I can just change the cutters and do that now. When I measure it up, that measures at about 14.4 and if I put it on there that key would just sit below that edge there so I would like to keep the t-slot clear yeah so I will take a bit off it just half a millimeter cut I've machined one and a half millimetres off the height of these keys. Now my friend Tony, who has a similar vice, had a similar problem, but his approach was to re-machine the slots in the base of the vice. Now that might have been a better solution because that kind of future proofs the vice and it fixes the root cause of the problem, whereas I've kind of, you know, made compound errors to get it right. But that's not the track that I was on at the time and, you know, this is just how it's ended up. But I'm going to spot mark these keys to make sure they go in always the right way. It's never a good idea to be centre punching cast iron so I'll use this spot drill to mark it. Now the test. So that's on zero. And it's still on zero. So that's pretty good. However, I will admit to you that that was after a bit of work. As the keys drop into the table, there's a bit of wiggle. I'll show you. When I loosen off the hold downs, you know, it will move either side of that mark. Well, that's fine. If I push forward, you can see where it lands. Now I'm going to try it with just with the vice pushed forward as I clamp it. Never been seen before on TV. So you're going to see it for the first time. I'll try and set that to zero there. And as I go back, That's out by three one hundredths of a millimetre, so 1.2 thou. And that's just dropping in and pushing it forward as I clamp it. So I'm certainly happy with that. I think that's a pretty good outcome in the end. Well, that took a bit of work, didn't it? Because I forgot my own rule, which is assume nothing, trust nothing. And I should have checked those slots first. Never mind. Anyway, I think that's enough for this video. Next video might be sorting out the hold down clamps and maybe doing something with this screw. Not sure yet, we'll just have to see because it's a journey of discovery, isn't it? Anyway, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.